I have always gone for pap smears every year. Yeah. I've done all my due diligence. I've made sure that, you know, I thought I knew what I needed to know. Yeah. I had have never had an abnormal pap smear until last year. Um, and even that was a very – it wasn't described to me in a way that I knew that I could get mm. cervical cancer. It was just a, quite a – flippant remark about it having a couple yeah. of abnormal cells anyway i is this now so you're saying that's how it was actually presented to you during the diagnosis yeah so it was it was likely there were some abnormal cells and you need to come back for a pap smear at a later point um it wasn't this could lead to something more serious uh this could lead to cervical cancer so how long ago was that that was you? april last year 2019 the first of April. Wow. So yeah, and then obviously, yeah, which is quite a big thing because I didn't know, and this is and this is why I've started doing the videos regarding my diagnosis and and, and my treatment yeah. and what's happened to me because there's terminology that a lot of people don't understand. Most people don't see their pathology reports. Uh, they rely on the doctor to give give um, the results to them, which yeah. is fine to a degree, but. Uh, I think it's important to understand what's going on with your body. So at that point, there should have been certainly alarm bells ringing from the doctor's side. Yeah, there should have been because um, you would usually do a second examination uh, yeah, um, called a coloscopy, which yeah. is to get a deeper piece of tissue to understand how, yeah. how deep those abnormal cells are. Um, so anyway, I, I didn't go yeah. back for, for my pap smear in April this year because um, four days before we went into lockdown and seeing a, a gynecologist or a doctor for a normal um, checkup wasn't allowed at the time during level five. But I had no symptoms, Vic, so I, it wasn't like I thought, oh, there's something wrong. I literally, there was nothing wrong with me. Um, and I kind of... I didn't even know that I had ascus cells, to be honest, from the pap smear last year. So I'd just been told that I had a couple of abnormal cells. I didn't know what they were. I never saw the pathology results. Yes, yeah. I didn't know what they could become. I didn't know. So to me, um, an ascus means atypical cells of unknown significance. Yeah. So it's not a diagnosis. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. They found something. They're not quite sure what it is. So you need to come back for another review. So I didn't go back in April. I then had a, a bleed on the 26th of July, and it was really bad. And I said to my husband, I think I need to see the gynae. Something's not right here. Yeah. And on the 31st of July, I saw the gynae, and he said to me, mm, it's not ideal. Your cervix doesn't look great. So he did a pap smear then. We sent it off for pathology, and then about um, – Five days later, we got the results, and there were SIN3 uh, cells, precancerous cells in my cervix. So there's layers to your cervix, yep. SIN1, SIN2, and SIN3, and then you yep. get the base layer. So you going as you go further down, you get closer to getting cervical cancer. Right, Once it's right, gone yeah. through the base, then you, know, you, you get the, the stages and the grades of cervical cancer. So just maybe on that point, so in... in and, and and I think your your point in terms of this is preventative, um, you know, there are certain questions you should be asking. Correct. There are certain things that you need to 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 be aware of. Um, and I'm just coming back to to the question of, um, you know, these are just you know abnormal cells, mm. right? Um, and if the alarm bell's not ringing in the doctor. Yeah, I, something so should ring in you because yeah. the assumption as you're making is that everybody just throws everything on the lap of the doctor. <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't think I mean as much as you want that to be the person who should be doing, yeah. you know, I don't think it's fair because I just think you need to have some responsibility and accountability, but you also need to understand it and we are not doctors. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, yeah. So anything I say today is is based on my journey and what I've found out. But the other thing that I need to note is that the smear that he did last year didn't have adequate sampling. So he couldn't sample at the time for HPV. Is that as a consequence of the way he smeared or is that as a consequence of just not being able to smear? No, it was obviously the way he'd smeared. He hadn't get a, hadn't got a good enough sample, which which is a I mean that I think that's a pretty common thing. It's did you find that out after or I found that out about 
six weeks ago. Oh, geez. so I remember I didn't see my pathology, yes, so I yeah. didn't see that it said there was not an adequate amount. Ah, so that's actually the reading of the of the, the pathologist. Re- the path- the Okay. I'm yeah. So now HPV is the human papillomavirus. Yep. About 80 to 90% of us will get it before we die. Um, it's a very common virus. There's, there's uh, over 100 strains. Um, right. Most of them are, are low risk, but there are a couple that are, are very high risk. Um, as, my, as my professor said to me, when he explained it to me, he said, you've got, there's, he said, there's a couple of strains that are like, um, Gangsters mm. said they're like really bad guys. You don't really want them in your system. Oh right! <laughs> and he said you've got the mob boss. So I've got HPV sixteen, which causes mm. about seventy percent of cervical cancers. So the sixteen and the eighteen strain are pretty terrible. 